so all this started last week when I added rear subs. So I now have subs in the four corners of my room. And I was talking to Matt from Storm Audio. And Storm mm -hmm. Audio has this really cool piece in the processor called Expert Bass Control. and allows you to put and tie subs into specific parts of your room. And you can link speakers to those subs. So if I have a sound that comes out of my front left speaker, my front left speaker, mm -hmm. I can make it so that, let's say, and I'm I, these aren't my actual numbers, but let's say I, I can make it so 75% of the LFE comes out of my front left sub and 25% of it comes out of the rear. Mm -hmm. And then as the signal, it, we're going to stay on the left side, moves down my line. So if it went to my wides, then surrounds, then surround two and then my rears the amount of lfe that it would play to each one of the subs would change so it mm -hmm. you can feel the low frequency actually moving through the room which is super cool right. so take for instance um what was it there's uh during the race scene in ready, ready player, player one mm -hmm. there's a couple times when vehicles come from certain locations and move through the room and you can actually feel the low frequency. It's really? quick, but you can feel it and it's super cool. That's interesting. So it, it took a while to get dialed in and I haven't gotten it fully dialed in, but it was just taking those things to the next level. And it's not anything to do with room correction or anything like that. It's a fully manual process interesting. right now from storm, but it was just a yeah. super cool addition that I'd never really looked into or taken advantage of in storm. But that also adding the extra subs showcase some problems that my room has. Yeah. And this came up at M wave in that my mm -hmm. room vibrates a lot, right? There's some issues with it. And this really pushed me to the point where I just need to fix these things. So one of my neighbors is a really good painter um, came over and he helped me hunt for rattles. Yeah. And if anybody doesn't know, Hunting for rattles can be a huge pain in the butt. Right? It is. I haven't huge, even done it in my room. I'm, I'm 15 years into it. But what you end up doing, the best way to do it is you do sign sweeps mm -hmm. or not even a sweep. You'll just like have a, your subs oh, play a specific note or a, spe that's the best way. a spe specific hurt mm -hmm. and you just move up and you find the resonance frequencies for everything in the room. Yep. Now, when you have multiple sub locations in four different corners, you end up having to do this four times. Right, because one of the subs is going to do one thing, and then the other one's going to have other rattles than the back one and the back right. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing this a bunch. We put in two hundred screws into my room. <laughs> Swiss <laughs> cheese, man. Hundred. That's hilarious. And not only not only was it just screws, we found. So is, is this back, mostly like drywall? That's so a lot of it was vibrating. drywall, okay. and this is where why clips are important. I didn't go the clip route, but this is why clips are important because I did all of this before I became a dealer and it was just kind of a, it's great now. I mean, there's some small issues, but we fixed yeah. a lot of them. And then we found out that my front subs are in the walls, right? They're in cavities yeah. and there's these big, not big, but there's these openings that they sit in yeah. and there's HVAC in with my front right sub. And it was actually vibrating the HVAC so bad that and this HVAC is, you can hear it outside the room, like the yeah. main area of my basement then you have right. the theater you can hear it through the doors when they're shut it is vibrating in the wall that bad and you could hear that um then there was another one where the fabric because i have front velvet mm -hmm. was cu coming down slightly over one of the subwoofers on the right. front left okay and the 4000 was moving that fabric so fast it just sounded like a high pitch clicking in the back of the room it was really really odd that. That's yeah interesting. it was really difficult to find some of this stuff but we ended yeah. up finding a lot of it um it was really interesting to walk around the room and watch at certain frequencies the wall just like vibrate yeah. and so it was because it was be it was wasn't attached well enough to the studs and you could hear it hitting the studs um so it was it was a lot of work, but we got everything, you know, uh, sanded and repainted and everything. Sure. So you'd never know we did it nice. now, but it's it was a lot of work, but it now send, sounds, in my opinion, better than ever. But that led sure. to me rec thinking for Michael, you know, yeah. what's the most important part of the room or most important part of the home theater? Well, yeah. to me, 
the more I do this, the more I realize that it's the room. Now, yeah. there are certain things that I don't really reckon, think I will ever do because I think they're overkill. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there are things that you need to think about and do um, in order to make sure that you don't have the room ruining your experience. Sure. And I know my, and that could be a lot of things. That can be light. I remember, um, man, I guess it's been maybe close to a year ago. I knew for a long time, I've got a double sliding glass door on the right side of my theater room. So it lets in a decent amount of ambient light. Never really thought a ton about it. I'm just thinking, okay, I really do not want to learn how to tint a window. And I'm thinking, okay, that's really the only option is doing tint or just hanging some really, really thick curtains and kind of stuffing it in there and kind of walling it off. But I need access in and out of that, that door because when I bring in theater seats, when I bring in large subwoofers, um, pretty much anything that's large, um, my rear entrance into the room, mm -hmm. it's a double door, but it's like two little half doors, if that kind of makes sense. Like my but, room? Yeah, but they're small. Uh, um, are they solid I mean, I guess, or hollow core? It's hollow. Oh, yeah. yeah. But the other part, the other door, the reason why I can't get even good size stuff through that door is one of those doors I can't open because it opens into my riser. And so oh. that door is like permanently stuck. So, which is no big deal. If I need something big to come into the theater room, I just walk around the back of the house, come in through that double sliding mm -hmm. glass door. So I know I needed to keep that door accessible. So I couldn't like permanently wall it off. I couldn't permanently block that. There was one day I thought, you know, let me do some research. And I found some, uh, it's called Vela. I think it's called Velamax, and the Velamax literally you spray water on the the window, you spray water on the back of this fabric, and you stick it on, and you take a squeegee and squeegee out the water, and it sticks to that window with um, static cling, and it has not fallen, it has not moved, it has not budged. It's extremely light reflective on the outside of the house. It looks like a mirror. Mm -hmm. On the inside, it just looks like a solid black. And so cool putting that on there, but that's another aspect of, okay, the room really matters. Mm -hmm. What you do to your room and the more that you can put into that room, whether it's a new construction or in your, in my case, it's kind of after the fact and we're trying to, okay, what can we do to make our room experience better? My issue, I didn't realize this, but there was a guy that came over and, and well, you know, I'm Nick. And so mm -hmm. Nick said, Hey, I'm going to be down in your area. If you want to, I'd love to come by and hang out with you. And I'll even bring my colorimeter and my calibration software and I'll calibrate your projector. And I went, dude, that'd be awesome. Never had it really professionally calibrated. And Nick knows what he's doing. So Nick told me, he said, Michael, if you can get this room darker and block out the light from that window, that sliding glass window, he said, you will double the contrast ratio on your image. And I don't know what it was, but when he said that, it was a no-brainer. I've got to do this. And so that's when I began to research, found the Velamax. It cost me like 20 or 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are you serious, man? It took you 14 years to do this? What the <laughs> heck are you thinking, man? But Sometimes kind of the you same just need thing. a push. It's kind of the same thing. you know. I mean, you're talking about going through meticulously every single frequency. And I've done that in my room. I've, I've got like a CD that just plays a 20 Hertz test tone. And then it plays that for like 30 seconds. Then it goes to 21 Hertz or 22 Hertz, or maybe it goes the other way, but that's mm -hmm. what you guys need to do. You can download them from the internet. Uh, sometimes you can order a CD um, and just go through each one of those and just listen. Cause if you turn up your volume, let's say at 18 Hertz, you're going to see there's some stuff that's going to start rattling in your room probably. Mm -hmm. Or maybe well, the other thing you can do is you can do something like Rue and use a sine wave generator. Okay, so that's true. So absolutely. So, um, but definitely. So these things, I think they really matter. And um, kind of what I posted in the the description of this video and this live stream is that there's no amount, like there's no gear that you can add to a room to fix that. I can't add a projector that's going to eliminate that ambient that, that's gonna minimum. change it's coming yeah but you can't, you can't fix that spatial well, no. to fix light space spa oh the light no the yeah, sound yeah, that's yes. on, yeah. 
but that's what I'm saying. It's like, okay, you all right, spatial isn't going to fix your rattles. Mm, no way. So spatial is able to use no noise cancellation in order to get rid of frequencies. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. It's pretty cool. I don't, Dude, I don't know. I can't say it'll do it because I've never, I, it hasn't nah, come out yet. There's no, there's no way. When my, when my wooden cool. cabinet, when my wooden cabinet is vibrating because there's some physical wood uh, pieces that are loose from having big subwoofers. Um, well, I can't help you there. Yeah, that's but what I'm saying. It can help with resonance frequencies. I mean, think about noise canceling headphones. It's the same premise. Use hmm. noise, use frequencies to cancel out other, yeah, other sound. So yeah. you can, you can neutralize them. Yeah, I don't know to what effect, right? I don't sure. know how far it can go, but man, it's there's some cool stuff coming. Very yeah. cool stuff coming. Yeah, Keith, you you mentioned that's how window tent works. Yeah, it just I don't know it. I, I know it works that way, but I'm just thinking. I don't know. There, it's a bigger process. This stuff was so easy. Like, and I'm not what I consider handy. I could do this. And you know, it literally is you put it on there, you use a razor blade, cut the edges and that's it. And maybe window tint is, is really no different, but I'm just thinking, man, there was no issues with bubbles. I mean, it's just completely flat. It was super, super easy. So definitely, man, Chris, appreciate the super chat. A big factor with the room is presentation. If your room does not have character, you're missing out on massive factor in making your home theater yours. That's true. Not everybody wants character, honestly, in their room. I like mine. Uh, a lot of people look at my front wall and they're like, Michael, you really need to paint that wood black so that it disappears when you're watching a movie. I'll be honest with you. I'm not painting it black. I'm not staining it. I originally wanted to do that because everybody was telling me I need to do that. A friend of mine actually built that cabinet and spent probably six months of his life doing that. And because he was working on weekends and so forth and just taking his time. And, and when he began to send me the pictures of, okay, I've, I've, you know, built the base, I've built this, I'm starting to build the archway. I'm looking at this beautiful red Oak and I'm going, and I'm thinking, okay, this guy has put countless hours into this project. There's no way that I'm going to hide the beauty and the craftsmanship and the detail that's in this, you know? So is that a sacrifice or is that a compromise that I'm making? Probably so, but that's one I'm willing to make. I'm not. Would you ever think about staining it dark? Mm -mm. That's what no. I was going to do. He was going to build, he was going to create an ebony stain for me. Mm. Just yeah. Like literally like he was going to dude. that would look really good. It would hide all of the detail. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Dead serious, man. It would hide all that detail. Guarantee it. You wouldn't be able to see the diamond pattern. You wouldn't be able to see the hand carved. Um, like he actually hand carved a lot of the the pieces and the elements on that top part. So it's just, I don't know. Well, so what I if you accentuated those using a different color? I don't know. I'm not sure. But it probably won't ever happen, to be honest with you. So sure. But definitely, sure. man. But Chris, certainly appreciate the super chat, brother. Always I'm grateful for that. Grateful for your friendship. And it was cool meeting you at M wave, man. So looking forward to hanging out with you again in the future. So, so Mike said, let's see, Chris says, but that front stage uh, still adds a presentation factor. Absolutely. You're right. So I chose to do that in my home theater where I was going with that. Is there a lot of guys that I saw in Kansas as well as uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, um, they just blacked out the whole front. Like they don't want anything seen. They want the lights to go out. One gentleman, dude, he blacked the whole room. out the entire room. I mean, we're talking everything was velvet. Speakers had velvet on them. I mean, he was just so the obsessed. Nigel approach. He was so obsessed with, with reflections. Um, that's the intent, you know, that's the extent that he went with his. Um, so not everybody wants that, but I'm with you, man. I like a cool vibe in the room. Like I like LEDs in a, in a theater room. I love seeing LEDs. I don't necessarily want them when I'm watching a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got LEDs around my screen. I would never watch a movie with that on. That would be so distracting to me. Now, if we're playing, um, sometimes our family will go into the theater room and I forget the name of it, but it's like a PS5 game that you can purchase. And, and there's a bunch of different types of games and it's interactive. You log in with your cell phone and, Everybody gets to answer on their cell phones. Oh, yeah, I played and, that. That's good. Yeah, fun. It's, it's just a fun family time. Now, 
something like that. We're not doing it because we got a 4K image. We're not, you know, that's more just entertainment. So yeah, I'll leave the light on on that. That creates a cool ambient. In Ryan's theater, a lot of his speakers, he put LED lights behind Martin Logan's. First time I saw that, I was like, dude, that is so dope, man. That Like, who does that? That was a really cool thing. Jonathan, who we have on the podcast, he has LEDs behind his JBL speakers, his line array. And so the RGB LEDs, that just gives you so much flexibility to create this cool vibe. Yep. But then just make sure you're able to either dim them down really low or turn them off when you're watching movies. a movie. rabbit hole of expense, though. Yeah, can I like it, though. Really fast. Actually, there's a company called Govi. Um, you probably have seen them mm -hmm. on online. They're sending me uh, like two of their, I think it's called their M1 LEDs because I would love to be able to change color behind my screen. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. So they're going to send me two strips are about, I think, three meters long. It's about 15 feet. And so I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on. Originally, I wanted to do, um, let me see. Well, maybe I can. Yeah, let me share this. I can find it. Um, there is, I've got, um, four acoustic panels behind my screen. And so the thought is, is what if I kind of outline each one of those? So that's a thought. Let me pull this up. I'm going to get your, since we're talking about. While you're looking for those, I'm going to address some comments that people yeah, are talking about with vibrations. So yeah. guys, the vibrations in my room are not from the subs vibrating. I'm on a concrete floor. And it's the floor is not vibrating. Like you can go down and feel it. The JTR subs, they have virtually no resonance in the cabinet. They're not vibrating yeah. at all. Yeah, the cabinet is definitely It is literally the sound waves that are resonating with different parts of the room that are causing these to happen. It's not the subs vibrating the walls around them. It's literally the sound waves that are coming out of these subs that are causing the issue. I I've thought about that and went down that rabbit hole long ago. And it's, I don't need to do that on these subs. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with them. But show me these LEDs. All right. I'm, I'm debating on doing some of the, the, so not like is... individual light ones, but the ones that are diffused. So they all look like they're one, they're sure. one light. Yeah. So this is kind of my thought is now this is just me and Photoshop, but it'll give you an idea. So if you look at this, so I've got my JTR. Oh, and that would be so cool. I think it'd be great. So yeah. my thought is, is kind of outline each one of these four. Cause right now they just blend in. They just kind mm -hmm. of, you know, they just disappear, mm -hmm. which is, is fine. But I'm just thinking, man, if I could outline around each one of those speakers and I may not do the bottom, it may just kind of go up the left side, over the top, down the right side, across, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I liked Jonathan's idea of putting them in the ports. That he he did mention that too, like inside the, mm -hmm. the ports of my LCR. That would be mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I just don't know if I'm like willing to. All right, man, I have to remove all the drivers, and maybe I can do it from the back. It it would be a pretty big process, but I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll see. I think it'd be easier for there. <laughs> so we'll see, but that's kind of the thought there. So I'm either going to outline those or I'm going to, uh, you can't see it in this picture. Let me remove it. Delete that. Um, stop that. And then let me open up another one and I'll show you kind of really what they are now. Let's go here. Yeah, there we go. Let's open that one up. Let me zoom out a little bit so you'll be able to see. You guys are probably seeing this like in my videos. Right now, I just have one LED strip in the back. So it's at the bottom. So if you could imagine at the bottom of each one of those, all the way from the far left, all the way over to the far right, there's just one LED strip. Mm -hmm. It's basically embedded inside. We took a router um, in a two by four cut the two by four at an angle and routed out this little slot. And that led strip sits inside that slot. Mm -hmm. So you get this really contrasty kind of because it, the lights strictly coming from the bottom. So you got these really harsh shadows, which honestly I like, it looks cool. I like that, but it would be, it would be so much cooler. I think is if I could change those colors and I can't right now, mm -hmm. it's just a blue led. 
So I'm thinking, okay, I may try a couple of different things. I may try just doing that outline and leaving this blue. I think um, you do both. Yeah, I may end up buying another one um, because the 15 two M1s, uh, I think that's 30 feet. It may not even be enough to do all of those back panels. It I won't be. I tried to You'll measure need more that. than that. Um, it adds up really fast. I think I need about 40 feet total, but I think I can make it happen. Because some of that, if you see, I mean, it's hidden behind the speakers. Yeah. So I yeah, can, what I would do is I would do the acoustic panels. And mm -hmm. I may even think about, you may even want to think about doing each panel on its own controller. Mm -hmm. So you can change them. Well, so or here's, here, here's the or something. So here's the cool thing about the Govi strips is that they have like sections. Oh, so you can yeah, actually yeah. you can control like this part, the left, like the front end of it's going to be mm -hmm. this color. The middle is going to be this color, and it'll actually do a gradient fading into each other. So it's pretty oh, cool. cool. And they've got they've got probably one of the best apps on, out there for lighting. Um, so I'm definitely excited to kind of check those out. I haven't actually owned um, Govi products. And mm -hmm. so I want to kind of slowly dive into the world of RGB and RGB lighting and um, and see if I can kind of create, you know, some more cool stuff in the theater. Room. It is really cool to add just to the ambiance of your room, especially mm -hmm. when you're listening to music or you go in there and yeah. like mine all turn on when I have the theater turn on and then we turn them off when the movie starts. But it just yeah. provides that level of, experience i guess yeah. that so chris says yeah he can confirm as far as the sections on there you can do that all right so draw the line says i would just swap it out with an rgb wic yeah so i don't know what the m1 is as far as like what its capability i know there's a bunch of different rgb some of them have uh white some of them have there's i don't even know the extent of like the different variations of rgb so I'm pretty new to it, but, but yeah, man, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. So we're gonna have some fun with it, but so anything else on the topic of, before we jump into you guys' questions on, where did it go? There we go. Um, creating, you know, and doing some things in your room, whether to visually increase, you know, that visual appeal whether it's blocking out ambient light, whether it's adding LED lights, whether it's chasing down rattles in your room, the room is super important, you know? Um, and even along the lines, we've talked about this before, the importance of acoustic treatment. Um, mm -hmm. Prime example, I had a friend of mine come over and he was listening to some bookshelves in my theater room and he liked the way they sound. I'm like, hey, why don't you just take this home and play with them for a little bit? So he took them home and I said, hey, how did you like them? He's like, honestly... I didn't really like them here. And I'm like, let me guess. There's no treatment in your room. He's like, none. It's like a normal home. And so the room itself makes a huge difference. He's like, I always wonder, like, how come when I come to your house, no matter what speaker you have in for review and you're listening to it, I like them. They're like, mm -hmm. they sound really good. It's because it's in a treated room. There's a big, big difference. It's uh, I had somebody comment just the other day on a video we were um, filming at Cedia at um, Elliston Systems and Design. And so we were talking, and as we were walking into the room, we were talking. So we kind of had, um, we began talking before we opened up the door. And so then we opened up the door and we walked into the room. You can like literally hear how much our voices changed in the microphone when you did that. Mm-hmm acoustic treatment and making sure that your room, you know, doesn't have these massive reflections that can really, really drastically but change. I do think that the opposite of that is true. You don't want to over treat yeah, your room either. hundred percent, hundred percent. And there's some mathematical like formulas as far as what percentage of the room. Um, I think like Anthony Gramani, he's got some of that as far as what percentage you need, you should be able to cover your walls and, so much diffusion, so much absorption. Honestly, I didn't really get into that with mine. I'm like, I just need to tame these reflections because it's terrible. Mm -hmm. I could clap one time really loud and you just hear it echo, 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 echo. And I know that's not good. That's going to reduce the amount of intelligibility in your room. 
Um, That's the biggest thing that I think that people get impacted by is they're like, why can't I understand dialogue? Yeah. And that's a big part of reflections and distortion and sound waves arriving at inopportune times. And if you treat at least a little bit, that's going to go way, way up and your experience is going to become way, way better for sure. So so what is the first thing that people want to do when they can't understand the dialogue in the center channel? Change your speaker, turn it up. I need a better speaker. I need to turn up the volume on it and turning up the volume. If, if the issue isn't the quality of the speaker, if the issue is because of these reflections in your room, guess what? Turning up the volume is going to make it worse probably because now you got sound bouncing around even more in your room. And so sometimes that's not necessarily, uh, Hey, it's no problem, Chris. Well, we'll, uh, we'll wait on you, buddy. We'll just be right. <laughs> when you get ready to come back, you just, you come on back, man. But yeah, man. So uh, let's see the benefits of treating from zero will affect way more. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. By having some, my wife always says something's better than nothing. Um, I started off with a few panels and that helped a lot. Added more panels. So it's one of those things. Start with what you have, build some, buy some, whatever you got to do, but definitely get some kind of treatment in your room that definitely can go a long, long ways to really in pre- increasing the performance of your setup. 100%. So Jed says, Anthony Gramani's, I think he's re- referencing him. I think he suggests 15% absorption and 15% diffusion. Yeah, I'm not sure the... I did a home theater tour of a gentleman. His name is Jay. He's up in Tallahassee. And so um, Tallahassee, I always get it mixed up. I think it's Tallahassee, not Jacksonville. So yeah, he's up in Tallahassee and his room has a lot of treatment. A lot of guys were like, Hey, I think you kind of killed the, you know, you went overboard. And he's like, no, actually I went really according to whatever he recommended. Um, And again, I don't know the, the exact numbers, but, but definitely there's some guys that are way smarter than me that can kind of guide you in that area. And so definitely do some research, but, but definitely having some acoustic treatment can go a long, long way. 